Invisible Dancing has many layers. Um, it's set in a one piece of, of the main high street and it's, it, it's promenade, so it starts from somewhere and it finishes on, on somewhere else. But the piece come, comes from a process, a period of ongoing rehearsal, rehearsal performance, rehearsal performance, rehearsal performance. And each day, over a period of time, uh, there is a sense of constant, ongoing growth. Keep looking at Tom, look at each other. Better. Um, there are six characters, six performers, that day by day, they animate and they become more present in the space. Yeah. So you just need a clear signal, maybe it's just the other second. And then you kind of you're doing and then into yeah, let's see. Another performance element of the of invisible dancing is live music. And I think it's one of the key points for me, live music, because um, it's street performance, it can be rather bland or obvious or and what actually makes you um, stay and watch and trying to, you know, and, and, and become, you know, you become um, interested in is actually, is the music that comment on the action. It's invisible, visible dancing. So it moves from small, um, incidental, um, uh, uh, and, 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 and invisible to, to visible, rich, choreographed thought. So I like the fact that people don't go out, go they're out on a lunch break or they on their way back home or wherever, and they stop and watch a some dance, some theatre in the street. It's such a pleasure to see you do two shows a day and that they probably most of those people will never go to a theatre, they never go to see any dance. It's a pro process of learning what, where you want to take it and how people respond each time you perform it. So you can actually learn from it, come back into the studio change it, develop it, and try again. And wait to, to, to the queue to, to become smaller before joining in, yeah? We have a local cast of six performers that they take this as a sort of professional development and learn from our dancers and bring also new energy. And they become a part of the company. I'm still kind of at that point where I'm working out which direction is going to be best for me in the long term. It's a good experience to be working as part of a company. Until now, I haven't really been aware of much dance going on in Kingston. I thought that, they were, that dance was a no-no here, so... I mean, I haven't probably danced this much since graduating in terms of class every morning, 
um, and it being so structured and learning choreography and doing creative tasks and stuff. So it's made me want to do more company work because it's nicer dancing with a group of people. So for me, I've absolutely loved it. I really love um, Luca's sort of style. It's very, it's very pedestrian, which I find really good. Uh, I enjoy doing it, I enjoy doing the class, I enjoy the people who are involved in this whole piece. It's just, yeah, it gives you good energy, definitely good energy. It's about taking them into a process and into a co-device process where who they are and, and how they respond to my starting points is relevant. So let's say, um, ladies, you do this first, then I think what would be good if Ladies, you come in the monsoon uh, this side to do the quintet. to meet the, the groups that I uh, express an interest to take part. What my approach is, is to really tell, tell, tell them, show me what you normally do and perform. It's me again. Hello. <laughs> Just grab this opportunity, because it's only happening in a couple of places around the country. And shall, and shall, really I, shall I describe it? it? Basically, you're going to be out and about on a Saturday afternoon, like that, with the normal clothing. It's not like revealing that you're going to dance. It's like a sort of flash mob kind of idea. And then you disappear into the crowd again. That's all it is. To begin with, they have a bit of... they bit hesitant to because they think, oh my God, am I good, good enough? We got this sort of, this professional dance company coming to see us. Uh, we'll, probably they're going to judge what we do. Can I have one man, one volunteer man that kind of comes in? Nice. Bit by bit, it becomes the sort of visit, it becomes like a workshop that we can, oh, but why don't we try something like that. Oh, what do you think about this? Not in line, women. Not in a line. Yeah. Take all the space. Yeah. 
Now, man, a be flirtatious, man. Let's all go the same direction. Whoa, brilliant. That looks great, well done. Guys, just enjoy, we want all kinks and dancing. So the joy of dancing together, so that's what counts. I'm just moving things around a bit, but using and, and, uh, and celebrating what they, they, they can do. Um, so I'm kind of redirect in a way. We will try with, to put together capoeira with drivers and there will be a ballroom, a capo, uh, that they done professionally some ballroom when they were younger. We will, we will have a street hip-hop group. Uh, I think it will be just girls and, and um, a few more that still have to be confirmed because these sort of things they always happen in the last minute. Very nice, very nice. Um, it can be bigger, a little bit sharper. How does it start? I think he has in his mind what he wants to do and what he wants to achieve, but it is sort of quite organic how he evolves. And obviously, because it's site-specific, really, it really has to um, like reflect that sense of place. And I think that's what Invisible Dance does because each place that he takes it, each town centre, each city, you know, is very, very different. You're going to get different audiences, different expectations, different groups that you're working with. So although there's a, a, a template and a sort of format for it, you know, it's always going to be different and it's always going to um, respond to the, to the place and the people that he's working with. In Kingston, we've never done anything like this before. Where is Sophie? Should we visit this one here? Okay. It is, it is busy culturally, but you still have people who will say, there's nothing go, goes on in Kingston, you know, it's a cultural wilderness. And I think there are probably arts officers up and down the country who get that feedback. And that is because it's sort of hidden. If you keep doing things in venues uh, and in the expected places, then you are always going to have um, audiences who will seek that out. But this is different because audiences don't have to seek it out. It happens where they are. And I think that is the major, major benefit um, of the project. It is. Let's try, let's try the finale again and then we move on to, to the next bit. It's going to rain in a second. Let's try it straight away. Oh. My sunshine, my sunshine. It's an alternative offer to, you know, sort of shopping or going to the pub or whatever, and just everybody can enjoy it. And I think that's why it's such a great thing. It's such a sort of like a family thing as well. Stay positive and see you in a bit at the college. But when people see it develop, they can see that it really does have a sort of, uh, you know, a big impact. And that's what I've been sort of really pleased about um, in Kingston. And we're just getting sort of fantastic feedback. So from that point of view, I think it's, you know, really, really worthwhile doing it. So, we are a lot, we are good. We're gonna make a really, really good show, yeah? Yeah, but most important, let's enjoy what we're doing. That's the most important thing, okay? Yeah. Thank you very much for taking part. characters are, are just brilliant you know we've had lots of comments from people saying oh the characters are absolutely absolutely spot on you can see people now trying to spot where they're going to come from you know the workman the chav the, you know the office worker all that sort of thing in order to make someone um, look at what you've done you have to be interesting um, and how you can surprise them before they get bored. And they engage with what's going on as well, like the, they did a little dance routine be, be behind the ice cream van, and then the ice cream van man was dancing as well. So it's just, 
you know, it really brings people on board and I think it's great when you do something like that and, uh, you know, you get that sort of like fantastic response. It really makes you feel that it's worthwhile doing it. <laughs>it's very energetic I must say and uh, there's lots of changes of choreography which we're we're outside our comfort zone most of us because we're all pensioners except for one lady I think so yes it is a bit different from what we've been used to but we're enjoying every minute actually you only come by this life once some of us are near the end of our lives so why not enjoy it I think Having graduated for nearly a year, uh, you sort of get to a point of, should I be doing this? If you're not getting the jobs, uh, you just don't know if you should carry on. But having done this just make, just proves that this is what I want to do. It's challenged me and I've learned things and I think it's always good to be challenged and to sort of carry on learning and to see that you know things can be done in a different way. so sort of dedicated and so sort of committed you get absolutely 100% from them they really really want to make it work you know and even when there are problems or hurdles to overcome they are right there sort of behind you sort of really working to sort of make make it work and I felt completely supported by them and I just hope that they've felt supported by me as well. Yeah.